would you do before comedy? After community college, I was headhunted by Blockbuster Video in the Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all drink to that. <laughs> I'm done. Um, but I went with Sears. Take it easy, ladies. And uh, I, w I worked in hardware, and the biggest tool we had was me. <laughs> I was awful. The hardest part was fighting the urge to hang myself in the rope aisle. Now, the thing I didn't understand about re people would get mad, and they'd tell you they're never going to shop in your store again. Like, that's going to bother you personally. You know? I never understood that. I've been shopping in this store for 18 years. I'm never coming back. I was 19, making 450 an hour. <laughs> The only reaction they were getting out of me was, ooh. <laughs> if you've ever done that, it never helps. Like, Where's your manager? I thought you said you were leaving. <laughs> Anyone else think the people that work airport security should look better? Uh, I do, especially when you consider all the health and beauty products they keep taking away from us. <laughs> hey, before you throw my aftershave in the garbage, why don't you uh, slap some on yourself, lady? <laughs> Most exciting place I've ever been was Hong Kong. I loved everything except the flight. It was a 15-hour flight. I was in a middle seat, and I was stuck. Oh, yeah, it gets worse. I was stuck next to a woman with a very unhappy baby. Uh, my wife and kid. Uh, <laughs> that was a year ago. I still feel bad about switching my seat. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to sit next to that for 15 hours? <laughs> You're gonna wake up the baby. <laughs> My wife is still upset with me because last Valentine's Day, I thought it would be funny if I left a trail of rose petals to our vacuum. And, uh... <laughs> Well, my wife told me there was a designer coach bag that she was really interested in, and I checked it out. And I, let me explain something to the ladies, if you don't mind, just for a second. Uh, any purse that costs nine hundred dollars should have eight fifty in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I got back from checking it out. I told my wife, I said, "How about we get you a knockoff, and we just tell everyone it's the assistant coach." And speaking of money, we went to visit a friend in Long Island, a uh, big, beautiful house. It was almost like the great Gatsby's house, big cathedral ceilings. The whole ride home, all I heard was, oh, I wish we had cathedral ceilings. And he said, well, why don't you take the legs off the furniture? <laughs> My wife's maiden name is interesting to me because it's spelled C-H-U, but it's pronounced malcontent. Speaking of Asia and Africa, this is interesting. My wife is actually from Asia, but right before I met my wife, I almost got engaged to a woman from Africa. I was dating this really nice woman from a little village in Zimbabwe, Africa, uh, for a while, and I proposed to her, but she said, <laughs> That's it. You know, you know, you got to move on. You got yeah, to move on. People think the hardest thing about being a comedian is getting up on stage in front of an audience, because I think most people are normal, you know? Most people don't have to be the center of attention, but I've never been one of those people, ever. <laughs> Love being the center of attention. It actually bothers me when I'm not. That's why funerals have always been a little harder for me. <laughs> uh, I'm not proud of that, folks. I just, I'm incredibly self-centered, so I don't want to hear about somebody else for an hour. You know, Bill was a good man. Yeah, well, Bill didn't take off work today. <laughs> My wife knows how self-centered I am, in case anybody feels bad for her. Um, in fact, whenever I'm being hard on myself about something, she'll say, well, you know, we always hurt the one we love. <laughs> See, when I was in school, I had that learning disorder where you don't care. Ah, it's a nasty disorder. You gotta jump on it early, otherwise you could spend years at a two-year school. <laughs> I went to a two-year school and dropped out after one year, but at least I finally paid off the $600 student loan. 
I'll tell you another thing that's really great about being a comedian, there's no HR department to worry about. And that's ironic, because people like me are the reason they had to create the HR department. <laughs> and here's a little more irony for you, my wife has a master's degree in HR. Uh, she went to school for uh, industrial psychology, even though I think archaeology would have been a better choice. Well, first of all, she loves archaeology, and second of all, like most women, she loves to dig up crap from the past that nobody really cares about. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, thank you. I love to see women enjoying that. Thank you. Well, actually, the first time my wife heard that joke, she actually said, that's, that's funny, but, you know, I don't really dig up crap from the past. In fact, two years ago, we talked about it. <laughs> See, the only thing I don't like about being a comedian are the people who actually come to a comedy show, hear something they don't like, and then say, oh, I'm offended. And it happens. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that have actually come up to me after a comedy show to tell me how upset they were. It happened... Uh, one of the first times it happened, I was working on a cruise ship in Alaska. And the uh, nice thing about working on a cruise ship is you don't have to worry about being discovered. <laughs> um, I was making fun of how much older the passengers were. And I, I don't care how old you are. I hope you don't care how old you are. But if you're uncomfortable with getting older and you do want to feel young again, book a cruise to Alaska. Uh, <laughs> you're going to feel like an embryo. I'm telling you. I, 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 if it, it was like a week-long near-death experience. That's how... I thought the captain's last name was Reaper. I couldn't tell who were passengers and who were statues. Even the spotlight in the theater was, was off, because it gave off such a bright light, the passengers were walking towards it. But... Um, Thank you. I, I'm, I, thank you. I'm glad you're laughing. And the reason I'm telling you this, these are, I don't, these are some of the kind of jokes I was telling this, on this, this cruise. And a woman came up to me after the show furious. And she goes, you shouldn't make fun of old people. I'll bet you don't make fun of black people or gay people. And I said, well, first of all, they get old too. <laughs> Second of all, I make fun of everyone. And if I leave anyone out of my act, that would be a form of segregation. And I won't do it. And third of all, do you really think you're going to remember anything I said tonight? I... <laughs> by the way, I actually got fired uh, a few years ago because someone was offended by one of my jokes. I used to work for a cruise line that rhymes with Royal Caribbean. <laughs> Now, it's a true story. I got fired by Royal Caribbean after 12 years because of, uh, a passenger was offended by one of my jokes. Well, technically, I was fired because he was offended by one of my jokes, and I told him to make love alone. <laughs> That's right. Now, in my defense, the guy did seem like a real do-it-yourselfer. I'll tell you a secret, you know, the hardest part about being a comedian for me is being away from home. But when I'm home, the hardest thing is not acting like this. I, um, <laughs> it's hard because I'm the same guy at home. I, really, I don't go home and start making balloon animals. <laughs> I'm just very, very sarcastic. My wife will say something like, oh, I want to be spontaneous. And I'll say, well, make me a sandwich out of nowhere. My wife and I watched the uh, Julia Roberts classic a few, uh, a few weeks ago. It's, one of, it's an old movie. It's called Sleeping with the Enemy. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Great movie. Great movie. You know, a woman leaves an abusive husband, then he tracks her down, starts stalking her. And my wife was just being silly and said, hey, if I ever left you, you wouldn't stalk me, would you? I said, honey, I don't pay attention to you now. I, uh, <laughs> What makes you think I'm going to sit in the bushes <laughs> if we break up? I mean, uh, you're right in front of me and I'm losing focus. <laughs> but, you know, jokes like that are what make me confused when I hear a woman say something like, oh, I love a man with a sense of humor. It doesn't make sense to me because I don't think men and women have the same type of sense of humor. You know, to be honest, my wife and I actually get along really well. We both love to laugh, but we don't laugh at the same things. 
In fact, my sense of humor is easily the leading cause of most of our arguments. We had an argument because of the word bagpipes, believe it or not. See, we have a bag of ice. And one night I said, honey, can you get me the bag of ice? And she thought I said bagpipes. That's all it took. She said, did you say get the bagpipes? And I said, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. Get the bagpipes you've never seen me play. In fact, why don't you grab my kilt while you're at it, too? I'm going to go check on our sheep after dinner. <laughs> One night watching the news, my wife says, you ever notice terrorists are always men? And I said, well, no, a lot of women are terrorists. They just never claim responsibility afterwards. <laughs> no. Well, I, let me, okay, I knew that reaction was coming. I, 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 know, I knew it, and that's why I want to see a show of hands from just the ladies. And please let me finish. <laughs> How many women here have been wrong? Well, there you go. All right. <laughs> now, my wife has never been wrong. That's why my wife's nickname is the customer. One of our worst arguments came after the big election a couple years ago, and it's not the kind of argument you think it was, because after the election, all my wife did was say, you know, someday we'll elect a woman president, and when we do, we're not going to go to war. I said, no, we'll still go to war. It's just the other country will have no idea what it did wrong. <laughs>